Right, you're very, very welcome back. It's Rowan Hand on Destination Newry. We're broadcasting to you from the traditional heart of Newry, the world. And uh, we're going live. Delighted to have folk with me. Louise uh, Kenny and Tara. We have Tara with us, Tara O'Hanlon. And David Loy from that wonderful school out where the, uh, the Green Road meets the Camlock Road and it's in Paul. Is that right? You guys are just back from your travels, and your travels took the two girls, no, the girl and the boy, to, uh, you went to Romania, you went to Kenya. Yeah. I rather think you got the easier time. You got the summer, sun, the African sun on your back. Tell me about, if you would, Kenya, what you did in Kenya and why you went there. Well, we went to Kenya just to see um, where all our money goes to, like we all fundraised before we came out. Yes. Um, and once we got there, we visited Lundiani and we stayed with Father Martin and Father Con. Yeah. And we visited the different schools out there, like every day was a different school. And in the middle of our trip, we went to see the Live With Hope Centre, which was a HIV clinic. Wow. And it was hard to see, like, the children. Um, children there. with the disease as yeah, well. Yeah, but they always say that we live, like, a positive life. We are HIV positive, yeah. trying to live their life in a positive way. Like, it's not going to bring them down that... They you talk about their it. life. What's the longevity? What's the expectancy? Well, we visited Sister Placid out there who was um, over the whole Live With Hope Centre. And she said, like, most of the children will, like, go on with their medicine and will hopefully live, like, to quite a good age, like they were saying, in their 20s and 30s. Like, they don't really know, like, the life expectancy with Still someone with enough, HIV. Isn't it? Yeah, but they never actually said like when their life would end or anything. Like yeah, it's course. not like they're living with um, AIDS. It's like yeah, just we'll HIV. come back to Kenya in a moment. But uh, uh, Louise, going to Romania, that was a culture shock for you. Yeah, it was tough. Talk to me how difficult it was and what did you see? How, what were, what, what met you when you? Uh, we went to many different orphanages and mental homes, and then the other side we did go to schools and. Orphanages were, were good, and the children were being looked after, then others were just shocking. Rough, yeah. rough, shocking. Yeah. It's an interesting word she uses, shocking. Yeah. David, uh, you, you tell me about your experience there. Yeah, same as Louise, really. Some places you went to were good, and then they were happy, and they were joyful, and they were having a crack with you and all, and they were messing and playing and all, mainly children. And then you go to other places that are quite tough, you know, people like in mental institutes and all that there. there. You know, it's tough. Tough. And how did that toughness represent itself in their lifestyle? You know, how did they live in the orphanage? Had they had they good room? Had they nice cooking facilities? Had they nice health facilities? Or was everything on the very edge? Yeah, very edge. Really? Like the toilets, the the shower, and it was just a hose pipe. It was it was tough. Like because their beds, they only had a sheet, and some of them didn't have a pillow. It was just a wee child. I remember in Romania had. I would just a cardboard thing to lie on. Uh, this was in one of the sick places. So. Has uh, your school been able to do significant things in, in Romania? Yeah, we, we did a lot over there and then we left money in Romania so that um, Danny could buy extra stuff for families that we didn't get to see during Who's the week. Danny? He was a man over there who organises the whole thing. Wow, he, he stays year. there? Yeah, with the every people. year. Yeah. What about the government? Do they give much help to their people or do they care? I don't think they care really. Yeah, would that be your experience? Yeah, they don't seem to acknowledge them really. Really? So these are, these are a class of people who are fundamentally hidden away from life. Yeah. Kept dark. And uh, it, is the location of their orphanage uh, uh, that you've come across, is it out of the way? Is it deliberately somewhere out of the way so that people won't see it? Some of them were, but others weren't. Some of them were in Brazov itself. Yeah. But then others were outside and they were the rough ones. They were really rough. Yours was very different because there's a, more of a shining blue yeah. sky in Kenya, it comes to mind. The Romania is very grey and problematic, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Did it depress you, David? It did, yeah, because when you're in Brazov, you've seen all these people and they're all well off and you know the main city and they're going shopping and all, and then about 10 minutes out the road. There's people living in these very poor conditions, and you can't even realize it. Yeah. Well, are we saying in any sense that those who are better off are either deliberately or uh, just by chance ignoring that there is no, there is no ethos of caring uh, by the rich yeah. or the poor? Is that, did that seem to come across to you? Yeah, it did seem like that. 
Yeah, really. we got, yeah. Could they understand why you guys were there? Could folk, you're coming from a school in Ireland, that was a bit of a, a phenomenon for them. Why would you be going there? Were there people wondering about you? Well, uh, the people that, no, we didn't really get a reaction from anyone, but the people who worked there, you know, like the curs and all that there, they loved seeing us coming over and, and they helping them out, yeah. yeah. Had they a handle on it yeah. while you were there? Yeah, they, they were very good. They were very nice people. They helped everyone. Take me back to Kenya, please. <laughs> Help me lift my gaze of, uh, across the, the flatlands of an African horizon. <laughs> well, the scenery was lovely. Like we had. You were in rural Kenya? Yeah. yeah. Well, we had like a natural safari when we came. We landed in Nairobi and then we travelled about like four to five hours into Londiani. Were you going north, south, east, or west? I'm not sure. Yeah. Were but you going up or down or across? Up. You were going up. Yeah. You're heading north then. Lundiani. Yeah. Is Lundiani the town? It was just a wee village. A village. Like you come off the newly built like main road down into the sweet town. And was it a block built village or was it mud huts? No, well, you don't see many mud huts. Like that's like an African, like traditional African house. But it's mostly just like we, like you know, like sheds. Sheds. Just small sheds, and they'd have like quite a big family in them, about like four kids and two like parents. Did you see any evidence there at all of the extended family? The notion of the great grandmother, the grandmother, yeah. all living together under the one roof. Yeah. Well, we went to um, <clears throat> a couple of house masses during the week, where like the family would all gather like in one person's house but there was one family and their like the mother of the house like they were called the woman of the house was like the f the husband's mother so a lot of families had that and then the wife and the kids so he would have his family living with them yeah. Tara did you see any evidence at all of an African church you talked about the two priests you stayed with I'm assuming they're Irish yes uh, which order are they of um I can't remember the one yeah. So they're Irish, but uh, um, is, is, is there an African church with African priests and sisters coming into it? No, well, we didn't see any African priests, but we did see African sisters. But in the part of the compound that we stayed in, there was the priest's house and then the compounds that we were living in. And then across um, the way was a big chapel that yeah. the people of Lundiani would go to. But we traveled to different churches um, within the parish of Lundiani. And, but they were just like, most of them were just like normal churches, just yeah. like with the main things that you need. Like. Okay, guys, you, I, I just sense that there's something a little bit special about Paul's. Is there an ethos there that encourages the development of this kind of caring? Well, it's a great environment in St. Paul's, like to be able to offer us, like to go on these trips as well. And it's a happy school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're laughing, you're laughing, you're <laughs> laughing as well. Uh, wh how does it grow in the school? What happens when it starts? And how does, the, how does the thing come into focus, bringing you from the concept of going until the morning you're walking up the aeroplane steps to take off for Africa or for uh, Romania? Well, all the fundraising, yeah, all the fundraising. Like, gets us like, into the thinking of like, that we're going and it just keeps getting closer and closer, like yeah. working together. Is there a big competition for the, the places on yeah. the trip? Yeah. This year there was, there was over 100 applicants at yeah. first and then they had to cut it way down. Yeah. Why did you get? Just my interview. Yeah. <laughs> I think. What made your interview special? What did you say? What was the clincher? It should be a great experience for me to, yeah. to see it all out there. And you could come back and... Yeah, share it with everybody else. Share it. Yeah. And your clean share it. What got it for you, um, Tara? I don't know, like just that I'd be able to interact with all the different kids. Like we had a lot of interacting on our trip with all the local people and in schools and everything. So just hopefully my good personality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and David has got the easy bit. He hasn't time to think about it. <laughs> what was your clean share that got you? Well, I thought, you know, they'd be looking for qualities that they'd want. Like you'd be able to help the children and talk to them and play with them and all. So... You just give it the qualities that you thought they wanted. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, Tara, Louise and David, thank you very, very much indeed for coming in. We've done Paul's Proud and you'll go back, won't you? Yeah. It's very hopefully. hard to yeah. put it on a shelf and forget yeah. about it now, isn't it? We wish you well and give our best regards to your new headmaster out there, uh, Jarlath. And uh, we look forward to talking to you guys soon again. Thank
tell that woman, what's her name? Hello there, how are you, Christine? You were to be with us, but you chickened out. Come, you're welcome. People don't like going on television, I think. They're very shy. But she's very welcome. All your teachers are very welcome here. Go well, have a good day. You can go back to school now, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, much to do today. Is it a big day for you? Not really. Not really. Quiet day. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah, okay. We'll play you some music now, Andrew. 